Tomorrow, voters in Ohio will cast their ballots, and the result will have a major impact on abortion rights in the state. But it's a little complicated. Bear with me. This all started when abortion rights supporters got enough support to put a measure on the November ballot. It would protect abortion rights in Ohio's state constitution. But Republicans have control of the legislature, and they've tried to restrict abortion rights. So in response, they called for a special election. That's happening tomorrow. That special election asks if a constitutional amendment should need a 60 percent majority vote instead of just a simple majority. This would make it a whole lot harder to pass any constitutional amendment just three months before the state votes on abortion rights. So basically, they're trying to change the rules right before the big game. Joining me to discuss, Ohio State Representative Bride Rose Sweeney. Representative, help us understand your reaction to your Republican colleagues calling this special election. Um, quite honestly, it's not shocking. This is just the latest attempt from my Republican colleagues in order to change the rules of the game, in order to remain unaccountable to the people of Ohio and to do what they want um, for themselves and for their special interests. Republicans pick that number, a 60 percent threshold. And a USA Today Suffolk University poll last month found that 58 percent of Ohioans support the abortion rights measure. So just how transparent is this move? You got a 58 percent support it. We want you to get 60 percent. <laughs> Oh, they don't try to be um, clever. Um, they couldn't be more transparent. Um, and they've said it themselves. This is specifically about stopping the right for individuals in Ohio to have uh, reproductive justice in the state. Bloomberg is reporting something that on a national scale surprises people, that business groups in Ohio are siding with abortion opponents because they want to make it harder to pass amendments for things like raising the minimum wage. Is that true? And if so, what's your take on it? Yes. Yeah, so we did have a few business groups come out in committee and they said that, you know, they are fearful of a, um, increase the minimum wage. But the fact of the matter is that there is hundreds of organizations from all across the spectrum. We have five attorney, former attorney generals, four uh, previous governors, Republican Democrats who have come out against this. The fact of the matter is, is that we have a wide coalition of individuals voting no, who understand that this is about abortion, but it's also so much more about abortion because this is really about the stake of Ohio's democracy. The AP reports that both sides of the amendment issue have seen out-of-state money pouring in. What does that tell you about how important this is for voters to have this power? This election is about whether or not the people, the citizens of Ohio, have power. And the Republicans, uh, my Republican colleagues, have indicated that this is a way to stop special interest, while the single biggest funder of the Yes campaign is an out-of-state billionaire. Um, this, the uh, no opponents um, have grassroots opponent. Uh, uh, opponents of this, people who are knocking doors, organizing. This is about Ohioans versus out-of-state special interest. And I'm looking forward to um, the people of Ohio rejecting that. Is this a wake-up call, though? I mean, right, this might be happening in Ohio, but we're talking about it here tonight because this could be a national issue quickly. Is it a wake-up call for people in other states about the power of state legislatures? Because when you talk to the average person, four out of five Americans can't name their state rep. Absolutely. I would say that the state legislature has more power over people's lives or more influence than almost any other form of government, and people aren't aware. This is just the latest attempt of the Republicans in Ohio moving the goalposts, changing the rules of the game in order to cement power for themselves so they can do what they want against the will of Ohioans. We have seen similar ballot initiatives trying to subvert the ability for citizens to actually check their legislatures in other states. And we know that it could be coming to other states. And we're hopeful in Ohio that we will show other states that they shouldn't attempt it there because we're going to reject this soundly. What is the most important part of this that you want people to understand, people who aren't in your state, aren't focused on what's happening in this election? Why should we care? Why is it important? 
because this is truly about the sake of our democracy in Ohio. And I don't think that's hyperbole to say that. We are talking about whether or not the legislature actually is beholden to the people that gives it its power. I have watched in the past year alone, as the Republicans have, when Democrats started winning uh, elections on our state school board, we just passed, the Republicans just passed a bill to strip them of their power. When Democrats started winning elections on the state Supreme Court, uh, they added party labels in order to make sure that they continue to have the power. I have watched as the Republicans in Ohio have ignored six different rulings over our maps that said that the maps that they produced are illegal political gerrymanders and they continue to go forward. This is truly whether or not the legislature has to listen to the people of Ohio. It's it's about abortion, and you can hear it from our Secretary of State, Frank LaRose, who said it unequivocally. This is about stopping Ohioans from having reproductive justice in our state. But it's truly about whether or not the legislature is beholden to the people it's supposed to be protecting. A really important story that might be happening in one state, but that we all need to be aware of.